afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Tom Weiss, I'm president of Climate Crisis Solutions, and I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you who is here today and who has come to, to stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters up in Canada, down in Texas, and down in Oklahoma, and everywhere else along this proposed pipeline route. We're not going to be talking about proposed today, we're talking real. We have more than 7,000 individuals from all 50 U.S. states and many nations who have signed our petition demanding that President Obama stop the construction of the southern leg of the Keystone XL tar sands pipeline. Right, 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 right. We are going to be delivering that uh, at the end of this press conference. Uh, we may be few in number, but we are strong in spirit. And as the great humanitarian Margaret Mead so famously said, never doubt that a small group of, let me make sure I get this right, of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. We are a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens, and we are here to change the world. Uh, and I, I want to quote one other great leader. Dr. Martin Luther King, who said, the time is always right to do what is right. We're here to do what is right. So, um, I just wanted to say a few words um, about the, the context of the Keystone XL issue. Most of the discussion to date has been a, a, around the northern leg permit. That is, at this point, it's a proposal. It's not a pipeline. It's not been built. Um, and we, everyone here, I know, is against that. Uh, we're all against that. And that must not be allowed to be approved. But while that Northern Leg permit discussion has been going on in the national media and in the national environmental movement, the Southern Leg of the Keystone XL Tar Sands Pipeline, the 485 mile Southern Leg, is getting built. And this photo here is a photo of one of the landowners who has been assaulted by TransCanada. His, his spirit has been assaulted, his land has been assaulted, and his dreams have been assaulted. The dreams that he had to, to give this land to his children and grandchildren. David Daniel is another landowner down in Texas. I don't have a picture of his property, but it's all over the internet. Um, he has suffered the same fate. Julia Trick Crawford, who is still fighting, along with Michael Bishop, in the courts, has suffered the same fate. Uh, Eleanor Fairchild was called an eco-terrorist by TransCanada for having the temerity to stand up and defend her land against a transnational corporate bully. And Susan Scott is another landowner. I could go down the list. There's so many. And these are brave... Americans who we stand united with today. And let me tell you the truth about the, the Keystone XL pipeline as far as the northern leg. TransCanada wants the northern leg, but they don't need it. They don't need the northern leg to begin pumping over half a million barrels of toxic tar sands daily from Alberta's minefields where Harvard just came back from recently, all the way down to Texas port refineries to be shipped overseas. All they need is the southern land, and it is now 95% built. They want the northern land because they get more capacity if they get the northern land. And then they get 830,000 um, 830, barrels a day versus 590 that have been keystone one. But they don't need it. What they need is the southern leg. And, and that is what this president flew down to Cushing, Oklahoma. Let, let me just back up on that for a second. There's been a what I what I would characterize as a bait and switch on this issue. Uh, many of you may recall that back in November 
of 2011, uh, President Obama uh, decided to postpone a decision on the Northern Lag Permit until after the election. Now, several months later, that was well reported, right? We all heard about that. Everybody knows about that. What has been less reported is that several, actually it's been well reported, but less talked about, I should say, uh, especially by the mainstream environmental uh, community, is several months after that, he flew down to Cushing, Oklahoma, the pipeline crossroads of the world, um, and to correct his administration to fast track the construction. He's an excellent son of mine, and I'm going to use his words to repeat what he said. He said, today, I am directing my administration to cut through the red tape, break through, break through the bureaucratic hurdles, and make this project a priority to go ahead and get it done, end quote. Those are the President's words. And so we are here to say that is unacceptable. Uh, the pipeline may be 95% built, but it's not finished. The tar sands picket has not been turned on. There's still time to stop it. And we are here to call on him to stop it. And Michael Bishop, uh, but for a family medical emergency, was going to be joining us today, and he had a lot to say, um, and I, I just, I want to ask that we send our thoughts and our prayers to his wife, Catherine, uh, for a surgery that she has coming up, and uh, so um, he could not be with us today, uh, but he is with us in spirit, and uh, he asked me to read a brief statement of his, which I'm going to do now, and then we're going to hear from, from some other folks. So, this is uh, Michael Bishop's statement. Quote, Trans-Canada's Keystone XL pipeline has destroyed my property and the future of my children and grandchildren and was approved and promoted by President Obama. This was done in spite of countless Americans and people across the world protesting the danger of Tarzan's mining. When politicians put big business and corporate lobbyists ahead of public health and safety and refuse to hear the concerns of those who elected them, it's time for action. Climate change is real, and I stand with scientists and many other Americans, and especially with Tom Weiss in challenging this administration to stop speaking out of both sides of their mouth and to take a stand against this pipeline being completed. The climate crisis demands that all tar sands development in Canada be stopped. This administration must wake up to the lion at our doorstep." End quote. Michael Bishop from Douglas, Texas. This is his property. These are his dreams being shattered. Um, I want to add an addendum in terms of his lawsuits just to bring everybody up to speed on that. Uh, Mike said, I filed a fraud, a fraud lawsuit in county court at law. The same court that TransCanada brought action against me. It's the same judge that issued the injunction that halted the construction for three days. Mike Bishop was the only person to stop the construction of the tar sands pipeline. For three days, he stopped it. He and the tar sands blockade and the Great Plains tar sands resistance. If not for them, not for those two organizations and their courageous leaders, members, this tar sands, the tar sands would probably already be flown in the southern light of Houston itself. So I want to honor them for standing up, putting their bodies, throwing their bodies into the machine to stop this. Um, so uh, Mike went on to say the judge then decided, um, like a light switch, he reversed his decision after three days. Uh, the judge then decided he did not have jurisdiction over this case and dismissed his suit. Uh, Mike said he appealed this to the 12th Court of Appeals, and they heard the case on October 29th, very recently, and I am now I am now awaiting their decision. If it is remanded back to the court, it goes to a trial with a jury. If that happens, no more actions can be taken by the judge, and I assure you, my fraud case will be heard and ruled in my favor. That's Michael Bishop's update on his lawsuit. So, um, so we stand with you, Mike, 
Um, we're here for you. 